so in this video we'll be talking about the iit hooking import address table hooking in the previous video we have seen how to hook the windows api function so this is also similar to uh, my previous video only so let me explain the concept of this so here we have a dll temp dll and here we have exports and imports so in this imports if you go to user 32 dll or any dll there is the function so there are functions and you can see the thunk pointer so this is called first thunk and this points to the actual address in memory so when this dll gets loaded uh, windows loader will calculate the uh, address for this from the base so it will take uh, the uh, base address of this dll and adds to, to this offset so uh, for now these both are pointing to the same location but when loaded in memory these uh, addresses gets updated in this uh, pointer uh, thunk array so if you if i go click on this one and uh, here you can see the first eight bytes will get replaced by actual address of this get current process in memory so uh, in memory uh, these contains the addresses so we are going to overwrite these addresses with the address of our function so if i want to hook a message box here so user that is a dll and here you can see message box here and if you click on this one thunk it will just point to the uh, thunk data structure uh, but in if you load into memory this will get replaced by the actual address of this function so we are going to uh, calculate this actual function and replace that with the function that we control so how you will control is we are going to inject a dll that will export a function so this is the dll we have made in the previous videos uh, in rush the temp dll dll and in this temp dll we have the message box a that is being exported so when this gets injected into the any process this will automatically gets loaded and this will get an address uh, of the base address plus this offset so that will be uh, that will be stored in a variable and that value will be injected into the real process that is actually using the message box a so uh, i have also created a sample.exe sorry sample uh, project so if i now here uh, it is the program is waiting for the user input and it is using message box a function two times so this is normal dot uh, exe and whenever this process uh, gets loaded this message box a function uh, address will be calculated by windows loader so we are going to overwrite that uh, address with the uh, address that is uh, this one so this temporary error is also exporting uh, sorry this one exporting a message box clone message box clone 2 so we have two functions so both are identical so let me show you uh, how to run this one sample.exe so after compiling just run this sample.exe now if i press enter now you can see hello world pop up press ok and you will see next message box so this is the actual functionality of the sample.exe now we are going to uh, hook this one so i am going to show you the uh, code i have written this is very long code if i want to uh, write in the video it's going to take so much time so that's why i i am going to show you the code uh, before that i have written two functions that is uh, those are parse import 64 this will uh, return a hash map that is a dictionary of the dll name the function name and the first thunk and the actual uh, address uh, offset so the dll name is the user that you dll or connect the dll something like that the function name is get message box a or get current process etc and the first thunk is where this uh, location is 
and in that location we have this address offset so if you add that address offset to the base address you will get the actual uh, actual address of the function so we will be overwriting this one because at this point the address rva stores at this first chunk so uh, it is normal parsing of all the dash header nt header and then we are going to uh, query the optional header and here we need to check if the size is uh, not zero if the size is zero then we are going to exit or return null so we are going to parse the imports so go to import and we need to uh, if you go click on this one you will be redirected to the starting array of the image import descriptors so uh, so you can see the uh, original first thing and also we have name offset so if you click on this one you will get the name so you can read the data name from there and if you click on this original first thing you will have the uh, array of the pointer array of offsets if you go to that offset you will have uh, import thunk data so uh, the first one is the hint and second one is the name so you can parse these names as well so that is uh, what this function is doing finally it will return in a uh, clean and neat uh, dictionary format i have written this function after completion of this code so uh, that's why this code is lengthy and the next function is parse export 64 the same way we imported uh, we parsed exports is our imports we are passing imports so go to the optional header and click on this export directory this will show uh, us the start uh, entire exports so the the DRL name is temp DRL and here we can see three uh, pointers this is the uh, address of functions that is uh, export address table and this is the address of names export name table and address of name ordinal this is export ordinal table so if you go to click on names uh, here you can see the uh, if you need to read these four bytes and if you click on this name rva you will get direct name so in the same way you can go to the next one so if you read next to four bytes and if you go to that offset you will get the second function name and after that function name uh, you need to uh, walk through these two arrays simultaneously so the first function is at the zero index right so uh, that means go to the first uh, word that is 16 uh, bytes and zero so zero offset in this function so address of functions contains an array of uh, the offsets of these functions so if the message box clone is the first function then read the first 16 bytes in this one and that is zero then that means uh, in this array the zero index is the address of message box clone so in that way we need to calculate this message box clone to also so it is in a loop now we are only calculating the uh, names of the functions and their addresses so it will return a hash map again uh, which contains the function name and this uh, relative offset so these are, those are two functions then we are going to collect the in uh, command line arguments so the usage will be uh, program name and the process id and the data we need to inject so process id is the legitimate process that is using the our legitimate function the data path is the our malicious data which is uh, holding it is exporting our message box clone function and after that we are opening the process and we are injecting the DLL the temp DLL and then we are going to fetch the base address of the process so I am using the create to help 32 snapshot function and I am checking if the module name is dot exe then I am going to save that base address and then again I am going to save the remote DLL base that is the temp error base so we have injected this uh, temp error right and that will also be in this list because we have injected before calling this 
create to help that view snapshot. So this will take the snapshot of all the modules of that process. Now we have got two addresses. One is the process based address and the dealer based address. Now we are uh, we start parsing the imports of this process. So uh, this this you can comment out. So first we need to parse the imports and we need to fetch the uh, address of the legitimate message box here. So this is all about parsing the headers. And then if the dealer name is user that dot dealer, so in that uh, we are actually printing the functions and here we will print all of the functions but in our case the sample program is only importing message box A so you will get only one output and here we are export uh, we are parsing the exports of the DRL so we have parsed the imports of legitimate exe and the, and the exports of our DRL uh, in memory then we are checking if the exports contain the message box grow. So this is the uh, our malicious function and the function name is message box A from the imports. Then what we are going to do is we are going to uh, add this one to the remote dealer base because this is the offset we have and we need to add that to remote dealer base. Now we have the actual function. Uh, to overwrite so this function offset 2 is what the final address of message box clone so we need to overwrite uh, that one uh, in the first thing that is pointing to the message box here. so we are going to write this one so at this address we have read and we have got the message box here. and at the same address we are going to write the function offset 2 that is our uh, message box clone function and then we are finally uh, uh, reading after writing so it is simple concept uh, once understood so all of these we are just modifying the address of a actual function with the function that we control so let's go and see this in action so let's enter this one so hello world and hello world this is the normal functionality and let's open this Now we need to find the process uh, ID of this sample.exe. So 2428, 2428. Now let's uh, copy this temporary path. So 2428 Okay, so now we are going to inject the DLL and then we are going to parse the both of these actual functions we are overwriting the legitimate function with our message box clone address now hit enter and we can see after writing this one has been overwritten so this is our message box clone i can see 1190 and 1190 that is the offset here you can see the actual uh, parsing of the uh, uh, for functions parse import 64 now if i go and press enter our message box clone function will get executed now you can see it says pond it so that is what our message box clone function contains so where is this one so here you can see the the two functions uh, message box clone can see uh, pondit and lmao so that is uh, i also printed the parameters of the legitimate uh, process what it is trying to access so this is how you will hook the iat uh, you can also monitor this one if there is any malicious in the uh, parameters then you can flag that binary as a malicious so that's how the antivirus and edr works uh, this is the basic IAT hooking and you can also unhook this one unhooking is just uh, oh, restoring its uh, fun actual real function address 
so i will do that in the separate video so for now that's all for the iit hooking